Well, my name is Daniel Asaruche. I am the managing director for Isoko Ghana. And what is Isoko Ghana? Yeah, Isoko is a market information system that connects with farmers across Africa. In Ghana, we are working with 50,000 farmers that are receiving information from our market information systems. And what do the farmers pay for this system? The farmers don't pay directly for the system. We work with projects and agribusinesses who are connecting with farmers. So let's say an agribusiness wants to connect to about 5,000 farmers in a particular part of the country. They buy a subscription on behalf of these farmers. And then we service the farmers with market mm -hmm. information, your base and office, with weather services, with electronic extension services also. And yeah. what sorts of information are most popular with farmers? The ones that are most popular are the market prices and then also the weather information. Weather has become very popular because of the fact that the climate has been changing. Everybody says that the rainfall pattern has changed over the last 10 years or so. So farmers require weather information to be able to plan their production activities, when to apply fertilizers, and even how to apply this fertilizer in the midst of climate variability. But the market prices have also been hugely successful among farmers. Farmers want to know about what prices are selling in what particular market so they can know where to sell and even how to bargain better with traders. And you've recently had a study completed, haven't you, that has shown the impact on prices. What, what is that? Who did that study? And what is it? Yeah, that was a study conducted by the York University Abu Dhabi Institute. And they conducted a study on 1,000 farmers in the four district of Ghana. They wanted to know the impact of our market price information on the lives of these farmers. And they looked at those using the service and those not using the service. Yeah, so they have compared a sample of farmers who are using the services and another group that is not using the service. And the results are really, really interesting. You were very amazed at the kind of thing that they found from these studies. A typical find that was found was the fact that for those who are receiving our price information, there has been a 9% increase in the prices offered by the traders. But even more important is that those farmers who do not even receive the prices are also having substantial benefit from the price information that has been given to these farmers. The reason is that those farmers are benefit, benefit from what you call external effects. So now the trader don't really know who are receiving the price information and who doesn't receive the price information. When they approach any farmer to buy any produce, then they kind of, okay, probably this guy is also receiving the information, so I'll probably change my bargaining strategy and offer him or her a much better price. So it yeah. has an overall impact? It has overall impact. And actually, when you actually look at the overall benefit of this service, there's actually a 200% rate of returns on investment on using the so-called price information alone. And you were talking yesterday at the Digital Africa conference about the lessons learned. What, what lessons do you think there have been? In yeah, what you've seen is that you have to really be able to offer these services over a channel of platforms, not only as, as SMS, but you also have to include voice supported services like voice SMS, like call center services. And all of that should be given to the farmers so they can choose as to which one they have. But you know in Africa the huge problem is illiteracy. So you offer information only over SMS and most of the farmers may not be able to access and read this information. So now you also introduce voice and you introduce the call center services. And that lesson that we've learned is also that the technology alone is just five percent of the problem. But in actual deploying this technology in the field is where really the challenge lies. Yeah. So for us, we think that 95% of doing this particular work is actually lies in how we deploy this technology to the field, how we train the farmers, and how we support them to virtually handhold them over the course of this process. It's about people. It's about people. It's about connecting with people, about understanding what they are thinking and what they are doing, understanding the industry that they are in, so you can offer targeted and customized services to this group of farmers. And in terms of the different types of channels you've got, the SMS, the voice SMS, and the call center, what, which is the most used of those three channels? Now, what is the most used actually the voice SMS that almost all the farmers prefer? Because this information is given to them in their own local language. In Ghana, for instance, you cover 12 local languages, so the farmers get to listen to this voice SMS in his or her own local language without any need for interpretation from anybody. That is very, very helpful. The call center is also highly patronized by the farmers. At the moment, you are receiving like 200 calls a day from farmers across the country, and they're asking all sorts of questions about agriculture, about marketing, about the weather, about prices, about everything. And what yeah. expansion plans are you working with? We, we are currently working with Vodafone. Vodafone is a mobile network operator that is very huge. In Ghana, they have about 7 million subscribers, and we've just signed, have, have had a program with them where they are launching what you call the National Farmer Club. So under this program, Farmers everywhere in the country can sign up for just pay only two cents, about 50 euro, 50 dollar cent. 
to be on this service and then they can call each other for free at the same time receive all the content that we have to offer we are also looking at working in african countries so at the moment we have an office in kenya we are also working with franchise companies in eight other african countries that are also using the soco to service farmers in those areas also